What's up, divas and divos? So it's your girl. We back to do a Real Talk Wednesday. First, I had to kind of like fix this lighting, not lighting, the setting on my camera. You know what I'm saying? So if you see me looking over here, it's because I'm trying to fix the setting. I don't really want to look yellow, and I feel like I'm looking a little bit too yellow. I mean, like when I edit the video, I can fix that too, but I don't really be wanting to fix too much because when you have to fix the color, it's like just too much work. Anyway, So what's up? What's up, you guys? So you guys already know it's Real Talk Wednesday. It's about to just like, you know, kick it for a little bit. I'm seeing like, you know, hold up, hold up. Mm. Do you see the the shine? Okay. Do you see the highlights? Okay. Hello, the highlight, honeys. Yes, the highlight is real. You know something? I have really loved Real Techniques brushes and stuff. Like, you guys ever use Real Techniques? Like, you know, the makeup tool Real Techniques, the girls from YouTube. I love their orange sponge. And I got all these other face brushes, you know what I'm saying, by them. And the one that I really like the most, girl, is the fan brush. Like, it beats my other fan brush. But this fan brush is, like, bomb as hell. Also, I got something to share with you guys, like, to show you guys. So... Um, give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay. So I wanted to share these lashes with you guys that I was sent. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all know, I love lashes. If I don't wear none, I'm gonna feel like Kermit the Frog. Like seriously, I'm gonna feel like, you know, Kermit the Frog. And this is nobody's fault, but my own, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I have really destroyed my own natural lashes over like so many years with individuals with strips. So mine's are really short now. I remember a time when they were so long, people used to always ask me, oh, you got strips on or you got lashes. And I used to get so offended, okay? Because it was just mascara and my own natural lashes. But anyway, neither here nor there. There ain't nobody saying that shit to me no more, okay? But you know, some people would be like, I love your lashes, they look nice, but you know, they ain't talking about my real lashes. Cause if they was, they'd probably be like, bitch, where your lashes at, okay? So anyway, you know, I have posted this Instagram post like probably like a couple of weeks ago because you guys know how much I love Shop Miss A. They dollar stuff, okay? So they had these bomb ass faux mink lashes that they just came in 3D. They're called 3D faux mink lashes and they're amazing. And you know, everybody, like everything on Shop Miss A is only a dollar. Like, you know what I'm saying? Unless you buying something, like say you got yourself like um, it came in a, a 10 pack, say, say it came in a five pack. Okay. Just, just pretend like this is some eyeshadow. Yes. This is wrestlers, um, the WF wrestlers fruit snacks just for my grandson in New York. Cause he loved the wrestlers and I've seen this and I had to buy this for him. But anyway, so say it came in a pack of five. Okay. And it's that shop and say, it's going to cost you like, say you have five highlighters. It's going to cost $5 because originally you're getting five of them, but single items are a dollar. Now I love their lashes. They, the, before they even came out with these new lashes, I was wearing their lashes, okay? And then I was also wearing these lashes that are vegan lashes. Okay, so anyway, I loved Shop Miss A's lashes, but then they just came out with some new 3D faux mink lashes. So I mean, I loves them, like absolutely loves them. And I have posted a picture of them on Instagram. Now they're not a dollar, they're a dollar 55, but a bitch, <laughs> I got like about 30 pairs. Uh, no, I probably got like 40 pairs. I, I bought some to share with my daughter because she loves lashes too. And she really did like them. So I bought like first go around, I bought 10 and then I went back and I bought 30 more. You know what I'm saying? And I have posted a picture of them on Instagram because it's so hard to believe that these lashes are actually $1.55. Well, anyway, besides all of that, you know what I'm saying? Young lady, um, well, not a young lady, but her mom hit me up. This young lady um, who follows me on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, you know, so I think she follows me on YouTube. Her mom hit me up because her daughter has a lash line, okay, a lash boutique. And I thought that was so cool. You know, her mom actually hit me up on my DMs, in the DMs, you know, it all goes down on Instagram. And she asked me would I try her daughter's um, eyelash line out, you know, would I try her lashes out? And I was like, yeah, girl, I love me some lashes. I don't leave home without them. Like, literally, I don't leave home without them. Like, if I do leave home without my lashes, it's probably like, you know what I'm saying, for a couple of hours. And I got some sunglasses. Like, I don't even walk around the house without my lashes. Like, 
these are individuals and strips glued on and they're not coming off for like two to three weeks. So boo, I'm not trying to leave no one. So anyway, I she told me to go pick out, you know, a couple pair and I did. I picked out two pair. You know, um now the prices to me, I'm like I'm just being real with you guys. I'm always real. You know, I'm frugal, I'm cheap. Like, you know, I go to the Dollar Tree, the 99 cents only store. I shop, I shop, miss a don't get me wrong, don't get it twisted. A bitch do like to splurge, but not really. Like I will splurge on like um hmm. It's hard to say what I would splurge on. Like my bills. Like I like to splurge on my bills, okay? Because I know that if I splurge on my motherfucking bills, I ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna have lights, food, all that shit. So I I do like to splurge on that because I just like to be responsible. So I make sure. But I don't really know what I like to splurge on. Like I don't really like to eat out all the time because I feel like it's a waste of money. You know what I'm saying? And then plus you gain you makes you gain weight. I do like to splurge around Christmas time because I like to see my kids, my grandkids happy. So you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't really splurge on clothes. I don't really believe in splurging on clothes because you know they're just clothes. And plus I get some, I get them sent to me. So Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't really splurge on that. So I think like the things that I would splurge on would be like my bills. You know, and people are probably like splurge on your bills, but that's just me. Um, my household items, like, you know, I'll go to the Dollar Tree and I buy like my cleansing items, my groceries, um, and Christmas time. So I guess those are like just things like, you know, things that you need, necessities. Um, but I don't really splurge on a lot of things because I'm just into, I just like to save my money. I don't know. And I don't go anywhere. So anyway, you know, but I will splurge on something that I really like to like shop Miss A. That, that shit is a dollar. Like, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. So I took a look on her website. Now, first of all, her website is called Lashed by Dominique. Okay. So she has some really cute lashes on there and each one of them have a name on them. And each one of them comes in a little satin pouch like so, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, I did have two pair. Um, these are premium mink lashes. So these are not full. These are premium mink lashes. And I'll leave all the information for you guys down below. But the lashes that I got are the ones that I have on actually okay are called let's see I'm a, you know, I'm a zoom in so y'all could see. So the ones that I have on, I do believe are called Angel because I don't think I mixed cards up. So I will zoom in so that you guys can see what they actually look like. Um, I can't remember exactly how many lashes she had on her website, but she had, you know, probably like, I would say like, probably like 10 or 15 pair, you know, it wasn't like an abundance of them, but I think well, I'm gonna look it up real quick because y'all probably be like, I think, I think, I think that her lashes ran for like $25 on the website. Um, and I'm gonna just look lashed by Dominique. Now, so, so like I was saying, you know, I'm real with you guys at all times. Like I don't really have any, anything to hide lashed. Did I, did I do it right? Okay. There we go. So Oh, thanks. You know what? I've had the worst fucking days with this goddamn sunlight and shit, for real. <clears throat> so, like I was saying, and then the sun keep going back. I'm a, I'm, I think I'm going to start doing my videos at night. I don't really know. So anyway, I went on the website and I picked out a couple of pair of lashes. You know, you can join our mailing list to receive exclusive promo codes. So she does have a mailing list where you can join. Um, Valentine's Day sale, they were 15% off on all items. So I'm not really sure if you missed that or not, but, um, let me see. One, two, three. Hmm. Well today, when I'm looking right now, I'm only seeing four pair of lashes, like four different styles, which is weird because when I went, there were other styles. Now her lashes range, the ones that I have on Angel were $22 and then there's three there's another pair called rich bitch which i also have and that's twenty dollars and then there's the live which is twenty dollars and you know baddie which is twenty dollars so i'm thinking like there was more but i could be wrong but you know so for right now there's four lashes on the website okay and they are 22 and 20 dollars now i like them they're really cute they're, they're nice and they're full however you know for those who are budget friendly or for those who don't like to use animal fur on their eyes, mink, which is a rodent, in case you guys didn't know, a mink is a rat, 
it's a rodent, okay? I'm not really too big on the mink things. Like, I'm not, like, one of those who have to be like, oh, my God, I got to give me some mink lashes. Like, I don't really care about all of that shit. Like, because they all look the same. And who's to even say that you are actually wearing this rodent on your eyes, okay? And, and if it really is a rodent, I'm not, like, too keen on them because I don't really like rats. I don't like rodents. I don't like mice. My daughter got a hamster, and he likes me, and I don't really care for him too much. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and I'm going to tell you a story about that. Um, in another video, but you know what I'm saying? Like, so if you into the mink lashes, you guys already know they cost enough. Like I've had pairs that were faux mink. They're called vegan lashes and they were 15 bucks. Them shits lasted me for a good long time. And they looked like they was human hair. Okay. Or mink hair or whoever's hair. But if you're into $20 and $25 lashes, then you can definitely check her, her website out. But these are really nice lashes, and I'm going to show you the second pair, but I'm going to zoom in so you guys could take a look and tell me how it looks. You know what I'm saying? Tell me what you think. But, you know, you definitely want to check her out. <sighs> that damn sunlight. Okay. Oh. I'm about to have a fit. Like, seriously? You ever see a 44-year-old woman have a tantrum? Okay like a temper tantrum, like a tantrum, like, you know, fall out all on the floor, like in a department store, legs screaming and kicking in the air, like a kid, like a toddler. I'm about to have one of those because the, the clouds, what the hell is going on with mother nature these days? Like my video editing shit has really been sucking for the past couple of weeks. Thanks to the earth. Okay. And I know y'all see that. I'm not even going to fucking edit this shit, okay? I'm just going to leave it as it is. But I'm going to zoom in so that you guys can see my lashes. Like, I do like them. And I'm going to just tell you the the um, the um ordeal that I had to go through with these lashes. Okay, so we're going to just zoom in. These are the lashes. So these are angels. And I've had them on for actually, I do believe it's been like three, four days now. I've had them on for like three or four days. So I've had them on for like four days. Okay. And when I woke, now mind you, I told you guys, these are really nice. Okay. So I'm gonna show you the other ones. So mind you, I've had them on for like four days. I woke up the next day. Um, normally when I wake up the next day with my lashes on, they still looking good. They fine. But these ones, because the hair, let me tell you, they were so wonky. They were all going pushed this way. They were all like inwards. And it took me like 10 minutes to fix them. And I, and I couldn't take them off because they wasn't coming off. Like, I mean, if I really wanted to take them off, I could rip them off, but I was not trying to do that. So it took me like 10 minutes to get these eyelashes straight. I had to put on mascara primer just so that the hairs would go the opposite direction. And then today when I woke up, they was perfectly normal. They was the same. So I was happy about that. So I do like them. They're very full and they're very pretty. Um, but in my opinion, I don't, I probably would not spend $20 on lashes, but for those who do like the ones that I actually have on are called rich bitch. Okay. So these are rich bitch. Then I do have, um, angel, which are these, and these are really pretty too. These are full. Okay. So these are angel and these are the ones that are $22. Okay. And, and <clears throat> the ones that I have on are called rich bitch and those are $20. And I do like these. I do actually like them. Um, I'm not really sure. I cannot remember for the life of me if she had more lashes on her website because I could have sworn it was more than four. But, you know, just take a look at her. I always try to show my support. So make sure you check out Lash by Dominique. They do have an Instagram page as well as, you know, um, a website. I don't remember if she has any other ones, but, you know. So now I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I know y'all probably like, bitch, get out of my face. Okay. So. And I don't really want to be up in your face like that. You know what I'm saying? I was eating yogurt and stuff. I don't want y'all smelling my breath and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm going to just back the fuck up a little bit there. So, we good. I'm not going to hold y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to hold y'all. We're going to get into this real talk because I do want to have to do, like, um, a synthetic wig video today. If you have a real talk issue that you would like me to talk about, you know, spill the tea, talk about that shit on the YouTube you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinsmylover2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know it's a real talk episode. You know, it ain't about no bullshit. And also, you know what I'm saying, 
Um, if you want to change the names of the people that are you are talking about in your email, then go ahead and let me know. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, if you don't tell me that, I'm probably going to change the name anyway for you. But you know what I'm saying? If you want to change the names, let me, like, April already went and changed the names. If you don't tell me that, I'm probably going to change them for you. You know, shit like that. So, you know, you can just look down below for my, you know, my, my email. Huh? 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 So I only got one real talk and it's going to be quick, okay? For real. So, hello April, my name is Sydney. Don't worry, I have already changed my name. I have been watching you for almost four years now and I would have never thought I would ever be writing in. But here I am and this may actually be a long one. Let me start from the beginning. I'm the oldest out of the three of us. I have two younger brothers, 18 and 17. I just turned 21 in November, and at the moment, I live with my mom. I've always tried and continue to be her support system. Since the age of 10, she is a single, she has been a single parent. I remember giving my mom Christmas money that other family members gave me to help her take care of my brothers. And this has continued for years, only recently stopping. The issue I'm having is with my brother, the second eldest. He is almost 19 and is honestly the rudest person I have ever met in the entire world and in my whole life. I recently returned home from attending a trade school back in August, and that's when all my problems started. It was one day that my second older brother, let's call him CJ, blew up on me over my library card, something I let him use to take online classes to graduate. Anyway. CJ lost my library car and I told him that he should have returned it to me so this would have never happened. April, I swear to you, I was not mad at all. I was not mad because it's just a fucking library car. You know what I'm saying? And I said in the and I said it to him in the most calmest way possible. But my brother CJ has a bad temper and he's so defensive. So he starts calling me all kind of bitches and screaming and slamming doors over and over, getting up in my face like he wanted to fight. CJ is 6'4 and over 200 pounds. I am only 5'2, 180 pounds. So I grabbed the heel in my room for protection. He walked away and continued to talk shit and yell offensive things at me. And I just got fed up and threw my makeup bag at him, which missed and hit the ground. This big bubbly bitch CJ stomps stomps my stuff, breaking all of my items. Like this nugget is this nigga was stomping the yard with her shit. And when my mom returned, she yelled at me for defending myself and made me clean the broken makeup up. I had to be the one to replace all my items because he never does anything. He never did. That was the first incident, which I find to be the smallest out of them. But anyway, let me tell you a little bit about CJ before I continue. CJ is 18 and dropped out of school. He does not work and faked for months, was fake pumping. I'm just throwing fake pumping in there, pump faking, whatever you call it. Um, faked for months like he was going to class, only to be truly going out, smoking, and house hopping throughout his school day, which is only three hours because it's an alternative school for people trying to get a diploma. Okay. He continues to get smart with my mom or anybody that tries to give him a guidance. He's very lazy and doesn't clean up or even showers or brushes his teeth and only cares about his girlfriend. He comes home smelling of weed, leaves black and mild wrappers and tobacco all over the bathroom and has no shame about it. He is a complete mess. After I noticed that my mom seemed to be slightly scared of him, I knew there was no reason for me to talk to her about the problems CJ causes in the house. But I still tried, and she would tell me she was going to tell him to go, but she never would. So I knew conversations with her were pointless, but still I continued to discuss him and his behaviors to her. Then one afternoon, about two weeks ago, I got fed up with, the, with going to work, trying to get um, a promotion to support myself and better myself. And my brother working so, my other brother working so hard in school with an IEP and balancing sports. It bothered me that CJ stayed home all day, eating up everything, not cleaning, inviting his girlfriend over when everyone in the house is working or attending school. So I tried to have a conversation with CJ with my mom present, saying that he needs to finish school or he will struggle with jobs and have to stay with mommy forever. Which in his case, she still buys and pays for everything he has, including the phone. And I've told her the only way 
we will get him, um, he will get a job is if you stop paying for everything for him. I started working at 15, buying my own school clothes, buying my own supplies and shoes, school supplies and shoes, while also helping her buy my brother's school supplies so they could start school on time and not be late. And I was only 15. So when trying to have this talk with CJ, um, he just blows up again, calling me all kinds of bitches, and now he hates me, et cetera, et cetera. He gets up, he gets up and goes in the kitchen and returns with a steak knife, threatening to kill himself. I was so over it. I went in my room and he busted in yelling, nah, you're going to watch me do this. So I run out of my room trying to find safety and he's chasing me through the house with a knife. My mother is just standing there watching only CJ um, saying, CJ, put that knife down. She was so scared. She peed on herself. So her mom was so scared that she peed on herself. I'm screaming for somebody to get him away from me, and nobody came to my rescue. I was cornered behind the bathroom door while a man that's 6'4 and 200 pounds um, stood over me with a knife. I somehow got out and ran back to my room, locking the door. I could still hear him, still hear him calling me all kind of bitches and my mom motherfuckers and just all kinds of other rude stuff. So at this point, I feel so alone and call my sister and my father to come and get me, which took her about an hour because she stayed, you know, far out. I stay one night there and return home and everybody was um, back to normal the next day when I returned home. It was so weird. CJ was talking to my mom and she made a big dinner. But April, I was back with a vengeance. And I told CJ, if you ever in your life pull another knife out on me like that again, I will strangle you where the fuck you stand. So he starts talking shit about how he does everything around the house, ha! Huh, and he's calling me out my name again. So I hit him, and he grabs something to um ready to throw it at me. I don't know if you know what a resistant weight band is, but I had that in my hand, ready to strangle his ass out. I swore if he would have threw something at me, I would have been in jail right now for murder. So my mom comes out the room telling me to go back into mine because she doesn't want him to get madder. And he starts yelling at her and pours her jug of iced tea all over the kitchen. So that was the icing on the cake. I pushed that nigga so hard and grabbed the broom <clears throat> and grabbed the broom to beat him with. And my mom jumps in restraining me, telling CJ to go to his room. I was so mad I tried to beat him with anything in my sight. The mop, the broom, the weight belt, everything. The night calmed down and I just went about in my night in tears. The night calmed down and I just went about my night in tears, hating that this was the family I was giving. I never knew that hating a family member was possible until CJ. April, I truly hate him. There is no person on this earth that I've met as evil as him, but we're not done yet. So a while ago, my mom borrowed money from me for gas um, for her car. And I, kept, I keep my money in a bank account. Um, but my mom paid me back with cash. So I just pushed the money under my mattress. That was months ago. I never touched it. Anyway, this Monday, after I got off of work, CJ came in with a whole bunch of Valentine's Day presents for his girlfriend. And I was confused because, mind you, he doesn't work or anything. So, like, where'd he get the money from? So I go into my room to check where I had put my money at under the mattress, and it was gone, all of it. I kept cool, you know what I'm saying? I texted my mom, and she texted me back saying, you sure you look good enough? I started to get mad and started to talk shit in my room because CJ has stolen from me on countless times, especially when I got back home. So I guess CJ hears me talking shit about him, and he starts going off about not taking it, but I knew it was bullshit. I knew he took it. So he says, you know what? I'm about to beat your ass. I've been waiting on this. Me? I'm not about to fight a man that much bigger than me without something. So I grabbed a rat, a rat tooth comb ready for whatever. This bitch ra grabs the comb, you know? <laughs> okay. We start squaring up and he sees the comb. He tells me, oh, you trying to stab me? Goes into his room yelling, I'm about to get my pole, a gun. I'm standing there thinking he's just talking shit. I did not know he had a gun. April, this nigga returns with a gun, pointed it at me, threatening to shoot me and everything. At that point, my only option was to leave. I wasn't thinking about the police. I don't know why. Now I wish I had just called instead. 
So I leave and I call my mom who is still at work and she isn't responding. So I hang up and I call my dad telling him, you know, what just occurred. He contacts my mom and brother telling my mom that CJ needs to leave. CJ starts cussing my dad out saying that he's trying to fight him. Finally, my mom calls and tells me that she called my uncle to help her get him out. I'm standing outside a block or two away from my house. It's 20 degrees and I only had on a small jacket. My dad and sister came and they got me allowing my uncle and mom to get CJ out of the house while I was gone. We went out to eat, which, you know, kind of lightened my mood. But after an hour, my mom called my dad saying that CJ was still there and they were talking to him. I was so heated. Like, really? He just pulled a gun on me and y'all are doing what? Talking to him. So my mom texted me not to come home that night until she can get CJ some help and get him to calm down, which she has been trying, which she, would she been calming, what she has been trying for years and still nothing. So I'm mad again because I can't stay in my dad's or sister's house because they stay too far and I don't have a car and I have to go in the work. I have to go to work in the morning for a position that I just got promoted for. I go home anyway, and he's still there. CJ's still there. My uncle leaves, and everybody just goes into their room. And I just cried from anger and fear and feeling alone. I just feel like being here, I'm going to die soon, either by CJ or myself, because I can't take all the stress. It's causing me serious depression. I went into my mom's room and told her that she never had my back, and to let him stay here after he pulled the gun out on me um, showed me that she doesn't care for me like she claims she does. After all the things that I've done for her and for them. This is how you show you have my back. Then I'm the only one with the option to leave. Like I did something wrong. And she actually says to me, oh, he has nowhere to go. I can't just throw him out. At that point, I just walked away and contacted my cousin about the apartment complex she stays in. I make enough money to move on my own because I have, a, I just got a promotion. The only problem is she is, she says the place may have a one to two month waiting list. I don't think I can stay here for that much longer. I just want to know your thoughts and what do you think I should do to get moved up on the list or if there are any other safe options. I really don't want to stay in a shelter. This situation has caused me to have trust issues around people. I don't really have family or anyone to call for support. All my friends stay with their parents still and my cousin stays with her man and their child. So I don't know about that. Anyway, April, thanks for reading and I'm sorry for this so long letter. Keep being delicious. Dang. This is sad. So, you know what I'm saying? This is this is ridiculous. This is Sydney. You know, she's 21. So she is the oldest out of three siblings. She's 21. Then she got CJ, who's 19. Then she got the other young boy, who's her other brother, who's 18. And then her mom. And her dad, you know, she doesn't live there. Uh, the dad doesn't live there. And she has a sister, but I'm not sure if that is her sister to her mom's um, to her mom or whatever, but you know, I'm not even sure if she's the oldest out of all of them. Okay. But anyway, she said she has a sister. Maybe that's her sister to her, you know, her father's side, but anywho, so she got CJ, her brother living up in the house. First of all, let me tell y'all something, all of this crazy shit between families and bullshit. You, you know something, we have to get a handle on our kids because if we don't, this is how they going to act running around the house, cursing people out, throwing gallons of uh, a jug of tea on the floor throwing it all over the floor you know what first of all i would have been called the, the cops on cj i don't give a fuck who you are you my brother but you acting like a fucking maniac you can get the cops too calls on you like straight up and, you know and then you got her mom there who's not even really saying anything because she's fearful of her own damn kid like her own son you know what i'm saying her mom is yelling at her or yelling at her the mom's telling cj don't do that calm down and meanwhile he's acting like a fucking maniac like an, a wild beast you know what i'm saying screaming calling the mom all kind of motherfuckers the sister all kind of bitches and all the mom can do is stand there and say don't do that cj go back to your room calm down but she can go ahead and yell at sydney and tell sydney well maybe she can leave because cj ain't got nowhere to motherfucking go okay first of all let me tell you something. I can kind of relate to that because my son, who is 26 years old now, he used to seem like, I don't know if it's something that they go through around a certain age because that's what the doctor had told me, but I don't believe in that shit that the doctors always tell you because sometimes I think it's just an excuse for the motherfucking kids, okay? So let's just get that straight. So at the age of like 15, my eldest son, who, you know what I'm saying, he started acting like, not even strange, but 
he started saying that there's some noises coming from his room and that there's just like the devil is doing something to him. Just like this weird shit. And he started acting like really aggressive, tried to come at me one time with a knife, okay, because he just like blanked out, you know, started throwing the furniture in his room, okay, and tried to attack my other kids, like, you know, my other two eldest kids. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I don't play that shit. You ain't about to be up in here trying to act fucking crazy, okay? So since you want to be acting all crazy and you think something is after you, I'm going to just call the police and I'm going to have them escort your ass to the mental ward where you was at for two motherfucking weeks. Yes. Okay. That's what the fuck I do because I don't have time for that shit. All right. I'm not about to let nobody scare me. Okay. Especially not one of my motherfucking kids. And if your mom is in fear of her son, then that seems like it's a problem and she needs to straighten that shit right the fuck up real quick with, okay, you want to act the fuck up where you can get out. And if you don't want to leave, here's the police. They can come escort you the fuck out. But you know what, Sydney, that's on your mom. That's what she's going to have to learn and live with the hard way. Because what's going to happen next is your brother's just going to really get, you know, out of control and he's going to start breaking her shit the fuck up. And she's going to get tired of that. You know what I'm saying? She's going to get really tired of that and he's going to start breaking her shit up and then he's going to continue and she's just going to be a more fear and then he's just going to try to run shit you know what i'm saying so in order for her to get shit together she's going to have to put him out and if she can't put him out then what's going to happen is the cops are going to have to put him out now he's got a gun up in your mama's house and he's only 19 so i'm pretty sure he does not have a fucking license for a gun for a firearm i'm guaranteeing you that especially because the nigga ain't finished school and he don't have a job and he smoke weed all day long so now we got a fucking gangster living up in the fucking household and i'm pretty sure he ain't like one of them real gangsters but then again i don't really motherfucker no what is a real gangster if you carrying around a pistol that ain't registered to you and you ain't doing the right shit then nigga you a gangster you just type type of person i'm not really trying to fuck with in life okay i'm just trying to be chill and cool and live my motherfucking life that's all but so your mom got a gangster up in the household okay he got a gun and shit and you know what i'm saying he waving it around and your mother's just not even saying nothing he's still living in he ain't got nowhere to go your mother is fucking crazy OK, and she is just going to make her life worse and worse and worse. But me personally, hmm, if that were my mom and that was my sibling, I probably would crack you upside your motherfucking dome piece. But you're not me and I'm not you. So this is what I would do because that's my mom and I can understand that she's in fear. And it's not that she don't have your back, Sydney. It's that your mom is scared of your brother. It has nothing to do with her not having your back. It has the fact to do that she's living in fear, okay? And it's unfortunate that she has to feel like that about her own kid. But it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? It is the truth. Your mom... Whoops. Your mom is living in fear, unfortunately. Oh, my God. Okay. And she's not going to be able to, um, she ain't going to be able to stand on her own, let alone be brave enough to actually confront your brother on her own. That's why she calls her, her brother or your uncle, whatever he is to her. That's why she call him because she cannot stand up to CJ on her own because she lives in fear. So the thing about that is if that was my mom, like I said, I would probably crack you upside your dome piece. But since you're not me and I'm not you, this is what I would do for you. Because I'm not about to have nobody living in my mother's house disrespecting my motherfucking mother or my other sibling if I had one, okay? You as my sibling are not about to sit up in my motherfucking mom's house and talk shit to her and fucking disrespect her. Because I tell you what, like I told you guys before about my own kids, that, that bullshit that happened between us. Oh, you threatening, oh, not threatening, but wishing death upon me. Like, oh, I hope your plane crash. And like, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Listen, hunties. Did I just leave my tag? I really left the Okay, I did leave the tag on. Wow. Listen, let me tell you something, hunties. I will put your ass out in a heartbeat. And on top of that, if you don't motherfucker want to leave, oh, if you don't want to leave, I guarantee you, 
there's always the police that will escort your ass the fuck out. And I have no problem doing that, okay? I'm not like a snitch. I, I, don't, like, I don't like to call popo on people unless I have to because that's their job. That's what the fuck they're here for. That's, that's their job, to protect and serve, okay? But I tell you what, if you acting a fucking fool up in my goddamn house, you best believe you going to jail. And I'll give you a prime example because the bitch has already done that. Hello? Oh. Let me tell y'all. When my mama was here visiting, okay, back in April, May, now you know my son was, he's 19. Now he had a little drinking problem. And first of all, you're not about to bring no liquor up in my fucking house, okay? And you're not about to drink up in my house. And so it comes to find out that I always, I, I would never park none of my cars in the garage. I would just let him chill out there. He'd have his friends out there, his little man cave or whatever. But then you started taking it out of hand when I see, like, um, tops to liquor. So then I go in one of these cabinets out there. Sure enough, you got liquor in my cabinet, and you are smelling like it. So I already said something to you about it once and you didn't take heed to it, took your liquor. Stop, first of all, if you're trying to be sneaky, don't keep hiding your shit in the same motherfucking place all the time. You know what I'm saying? So 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, it was 10 o'clock in the morning, my mom was was here visiting, and we in the kitchen, me and my mom, we talking. And um, my son was will come in, he go in the refrigerator. So we like a, probably like about five or six feet apart from each other, me and Wuzzle, okay? and he going in the refrigerator, he gets like one of those gallon juices and he's pouring it in a cup. And I know I ain't bugging because I start smelling liquor. Now I know what vodka smells like, okay? Because I used to drink that shit all the time. You know that. So I'm like sniffing the shit. I'm smelling like I know I'm not bugging. I'm like, was you drinking? And he was like, no. Now mind you, he just came out of the garage. He was like, no, mom, what's wrong with you? And my mom's in the kitchen too. I was like, you weren't drinking? And he was like, no. What you need all that juice for then? Because you smell like vodka. And he was like, Ma, you bugging. I wasn't drinking. I was just chilling in the garage on my laptop. Oh, okay. Well, since you wasn't drinking, then I'm going to just go look and see myself, right? So, you know, I go to the um, I go to the garage. And let me tell you, let me tell you, as soon as I turned around out of the kitchen to walk towards the garage, have you ever had anybody walk on your motherfucking heels so fucking close that he damn near took my flip-flop the fuck off? He was so close behind me when I was going to the garage that, you know what I'm saying, he damn near took my flip flop off. He tried to get me not to go into the garage. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Boy, you better get the fuck away from me. This is my goddamn house. That's my goddamn garage. Try to get me out not to go in the garage. Like, that's going to work. Like, you re now you're really making me want to get to the garage. You know what I'm saying? So I go to the garage, into that cabinet. Lo and behold, it's not a small bottle. It's one of them big party size ones, you know what I'm saying? Like a gallon size one. Okay. He right there behind me too. I was like, oh, I thought you wasn't drinking nothing. Now, mind you, he was trying to tell me that he didn't drink nothing. He didn't have nothing to drink. But there was a slurpy cut, like one of those slushy cups, on the table in the garage where he was sitting. At. I said, so what's in that cup? And he was like, there's nothing in there but water. Because you know vodka look like water. I was like, so where does vodka come from? Oh, that's my friends. That's for my friends. That's my friends. They just asked me to pick it up. Really? How you picking it up? You don't even, you can't even buy liquor. You know what I'm saying? Didn't I tell you before, don't bring no fucking liquor up in my house? Ma, this is not the house. It's <laughs> you want to try to tell me that the garage is not part of the house. Nigga, that shit is attached to this motherfucker. Okay? You can park your car in the garage and go right through the garage door into the laundry room. That's this is part of my motherfucking house. I wouldn't give a fuck if that shit was a shed and it was across the, across the, the lot. This shit is mine. Don't put that shit in my motherfucking property. So, you know what I'm saying? I take this shit. I take the whole motherfucking thing. He gonna try, they ain't gonna try to tell me that it's not even open. Now, you know, when you buy liquor, it, the seal gotta break. That motherfucker was broke. What the fuck are you talking about? The seal? I said, really? Because the seal is broke. All right? And it looks like to me there's some missing out of here. Let me tell y'all. I said, all right. I got you. I took that whole motherfucking bottle, right, and went in the kitch kitchen with it because I was going to pour that shit all in the sink. And I did. He was having a motherfucking fit, okay? When I say a fit, I just told y'all I'd rather have a, tam a temper tantrum because of the sun. He was having a temper tantrum in my motherfucking kitchen in front of my mama 
on her first visit to Arizona. You know what? I, and then he walked, he stormed off and went and sat in the garage. Okay. Let me tell you what I did after that. I went outside in my driveway, opened up my garage and told him he best to move out the way because if he don't, he about to get hit with my truck. Because now his his garage privileges is over. My shit is about to be parked in here. And him and his little friends can never come up in my garage again. So then it, just, it gets worse. It gets better, you guys. This little nigga starts getting real mad. Now, he ain't never gotten like this to me, ever. But you got one motherfucking time. Trust me. One motherfucking time. So he talking shit. He hitting the bushes and shit. You know what I'm saying? The bushes. Like, I got these big ass bushes. He hitting the bushes and shit. Like, the fuck you hitting the bushes for? They ain't do shit to you. But you go ahead and keep making a scene out here for these white motherfuckers in this neighborhood to fucking look at me like I'm crazy, okay? And it's going to be a problem. I'm going to give them the something to fucking look at. You going to be hitting the bushes because I'm going to hit your ass up against the motherfucking bush. So he's still getting all mad. And I was like, you know what? Get the fuck up out of here. Take your shit and get the fuck up out of my house. So his bike was parked by my front door. So I closed my door. You know what I'm saying? I closed my front door. I have a gate, like a gate door on front of it and then a, a door. Now, mind you, I didn't even lock the gate part. I just closed it. And then I closed my door, pushed my door closed because, you know what I'm saying? The gate, you have to push open. The door, you have to pull open. So I closed the door, the front door, and the gate door was already closed in front of it, but it wasn't locked. And he getting his bike right there because I can hear him. Did this motherfucker kick my door in? He opened the door and I was standing there and he kicked it open. <laughs> I was like, oh, word. Did you just motherfucking kick my door open? I was calm like that because you know what? First of all, I had already called the motherfucking police on your ass because you running your mouth in the neighborhood trying to talk shit to me and be disrespectful. And nigga, we don't have that. And so I already had called the police, so they was already on the way. So, uh, yeah, when the police got there, he was pedaling off on his bike. And I was like, there he goes right there in the red sweat hoodie. You could pick his motherfucking ass up. Sure enough, they took off following him, brought him back to my house in the cop car and was like, um, he wants to talk to you. For what? I ain't got shit to say to him. Well, just hear what he got to say, ma'am, before we take him. Go to the car. What? What do you want? So now I'm going to have to go do five years. Like what? You have to do five years? Because I already go to court for a case and blah, blah, blah. Now you're going to have me arrested? I said, well, enjoy your life in prison. See ya. Mm -hmm. Had his ass arrested and in jail. I sure did. I sure did. And now he has to pay the court and, and all these fees and take a class and shit. And he comes to me and tells me about it. I don't even want to hear the shit. Like the judge said. You don't ever disrespect your mother. You don't, listen, don't ever disrespect me. I don't give a fuck about the police, okay? Because when you in my house and you being disrespectful to me, you either going to leave out of one or two or three exits, nigga. You could take the window the fuck out. I don't give a fuck, but you're going to leave. And if you don't want to leave, then guess what? I guess I'm going to have to get you escorted out. So, Sydney, as I just said to you, like I did, that's your mama. And she needs, she has a right to be safe. And it's unfortunate that she's scared of your brother because he's probably big and he shows signs of, you know what I'm saying, anger and issues like that. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, so what can she do? And then it's like, she probably feels like bad because that's her kid. And I get that. Nobody wants to put their own children out, especially if they have nowhere to go. But then it's like this. You're not going to keep constantly taking advantage of me either. You're either going to do things my way or you're going to do them the highway, which is go. So it's unfortunate. But your brother, he has no business with a gun in your mom's house. He has, you you know what I'm saying? You've already seen him display signs of anger. And he's been um just like really combative with you. And on top of that, he has the nerves to point a gun at you. Now, let's just say that you're not there and you move out, you know what I'm saying? And your mom doesn't do something that he wants her to do or your younger brother doesn't do something that he wants them to do and then he gets into an altercation with them then what 
Who's to say that he's going to be in his right state of mind? He's going to go in the room and get the gun. He might shoot somebody. He might kill everybody in the house. And it's unfortunate, but sweetheart, let me tell you something. That's your mother. You only get one of them. So don't feel like she's not, she doesn't have your back. The only issue with your mom right now is she's scared of your brother. And to get that fear out of her heart, sweetheart, let me tell you something. You don't have to tell her that you did it, but if that were my mama, and um, she was living with somebody who acted like a maniac, a crazed maniac, and my little brother, and a, and, and a weapon in the household, you best believe I'm going to call the police, okay? And I'm going to let them know, hey, um, this is a tip. Um, I was informed, and I know for a fact that this person that lives, et cetera, et cetera, has an unlicensed firearm in his room. And that's it. I'm saying. Sometimes you got to do shit. For people just to let them wake the fuck up you know what i'm saying and it's unfortunate that you have to go that route but sometimes we have to involve the law just to get people to act the fuck right you know what i'm saying here we got this 19 year old that stays at your house he your brother don't work he don't pay no bills he don't clean up he don't go to school he steal from you he talks shit to your mama he's disrespectful why the fuck should he be living there and here it is, you go to school and you work and you do shit, you know what I'm saying? You help out. And we got this low life loser living there, threatening everybody in the house. Who the fuck is this? Hello? Hello? Now, I don't know about pressing the one, but let me tell y'all something. This came from a 928 area code, okay? That came from a 928 area code. That's the fourth call that I've had today with that same message. And the numbers changed. The phone numbers changed. I'm pretty, I have blocked about 10 of these different numbers from the same thing. But this is the second time that I've called them back. And every the set, twice that I've called back, you know, I've said to the gentleman or the guy who answered the phone, I'm like, hello? And I'm like, hello? I'm like, why are you calling my phone? He's like, what are you talking about? Basically, these two people that answered the phone, they was like, I'm not calling your phone. And then the one guy told me that it was something, and I cannot remember it because he said that they somehow they clone your number just to use to get you um, to answer the phone or for scams. And I'm like, are you serious right now? And he was like, I'm not calling nobody. He's like, I know what call you're talking about because I keep getting them. He's like, but I, I didn't know they was calling from my number. He's like, I honestly, ma'am, I'm I'm not calling your phone. And then he told me what it was. I had never heard of this. Um, and I said, Well, let me Google this. But this shit is irritating. Like, I'm about to change my motherfucking phone number now because I'm getting really I'm just not gonna answer the phone. So somebody's gonna call me and I'm gonna be like not answering the shit, like for real. It's starting to really annoy me. But anyway, like I was saying, like, you know what I'm saying? So you got your brother up in there who don't work, don't do shit, is disrespectful. What gives him the right to fucking live there? Like he have no business living there. That he he shouldn't be allowed to live there. That's not fair to you, your sibling, or your mother. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't go don't don't be so hard at your mom because an honesty really, it's not like she means to be this way. It's just that she's, you know, she's frightened. And she's in fear for her life. She's in fear for her kids' lives. She's in fear for her home. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't want her son to be out in the cold. But here's the thing, sweetheart. Sometimes we gotta do shit just for people to learn their lessons. Sometimes we gotta do shit for people to grow the fuck up. Sometimes we gotta do shit so people can fucking wake the fuck up and open their eyes and realize that this is not how you're supposed to live your life. If your brother really thinks that he's supposed to live his life like that, being mean to people and being a bully and being disrespectful, then it don't work out like that because it's called karma and it's also called jail. Okay. And if you want to sit in the cell and get your first taste of that shit, then you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and keep acting stupid. Listen, Sydney, 
Me personally, if that was my mom, I wouldn't have that shit. I would definitely call the police and let them know he got a weapon in there. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, how you know that he ain't going to get fed up one day because your mother didn't make dinner or she wouldn't pay his phone bill or she wouldn't give him no money for weed or whatever the case may be. And then he just flip out and just, you know what I'm saying, either put his hands on her or threaten her with a gun. Like, that does not make it right. You know what I'm saying? And though some people on the other end of this video might be like, uh-uh, I wouldn't do that. That's my brother. First of all, that's your mama. And if you're brother is acting like a fucking asshole, a maniac, a fucking villain, a fucking monster, a bully, and all other kind of things that I could say about him, then he has no business being in. He has no right being in. And also, he has no right talking to his mother like that. He not only called his sister all kind of bitches, but he done called his mother all kind of bitches. He done called her all kind of motherfuckers. He don't wash. He don't shower. And got the nerve to have a girlfriend. Okay, let me tell you something. If you got smelly, if your breath fucking stinks, you are not about to sit up in my face all day. And if you ain't washed, nigga, you crazy. How he get a girlfriend is besides me. But you know what? Today's age, to, with today's um, day and age, these bitches don't really have too much coop. They don't really want much. As long as the nigga can fuck and tell them that, oh, you you nice, you cute, you got a big ass, whatever, then they all for it. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, like all giggles. They love it. Bitches love some bitches, not everybody, but un immature, immature bitches love when niggas tell them that, you know what I'm saying, they got big ass and all of this shit. Then, you know, they head over heels. And if the nigga ain't got no job and no source of income, then they still don't care as long as the nigga tell them they love him and all of this shit, they love them, then they good for that. So I I wonder how CJ got a girlfriend because you done dropped out of school, you ain't got no job, you smoke weed all day. And if he's not only a bully and bossy to you guys, I can imagine how he is to his girlfriend. I can only imagine. He cannot say that he's a nice person to his girlfriend. I wouldn't give a fuck how many fucking Valentine's Day gifts he bought that bitch. That nigga is a fucking control freak and he's a monster and somebody needs to put a stop to his ass. And the first person that I would call would be 911 to get his ass fucking removed and get that weapon taken out of the house. Now, here's another kicker. He could have that weapon in there and if some shit could happen and your mom is responsible because your mom is the oldest out of everybody in the house. So she's responsible. Your brother is 19, okay? I'm not sure if you rent or own, if your mama rents or own, but it doesn't even matter. He's got an illegal gun in her house because I know your brother, for a fact, did not have a license to get this gun because he's only 19. He's not in school. He doesn't have a job. So I'm pretty sure that he doesn't have a license for this gun because you didn't know about it. And had he had a license for it, I'm pretty sure he would have been bragging about it and showing you, okay? Thank you, Mother Nature, once again. But since he doesn't have a license for that job, um, for that gun, who's to say that he don't bring it in there, then, you know what I'm saying, some shit pop off in the streets, and then you got, you know what I'm saying, all these type of gangsters and thugs knocking on your door, and not even knocking on your motherfucking door, because why would somebody come knock on your door if they really wanted to shoot somebody, okay? You know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna come knock like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, I'm just here to shoot you or kill you. You know what I'm saying? So on top of that, you know what I'm saying? Who's to say that that gun don't got bodies on it? You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, when they get any these illegal job, illegal jobs, illegal guns and shit like that, this shit's got bodies on it. It's already been used in an incident. And why the fuck would I want my mother sitting in the house where there's some illegal shit that don't supposed to be in there, and then she can go down for it? Mama don't need to be in jail, and neither does little brother. The only person that needs to go is CJ's fucking punk ass. And so that's how I would get him the fuck up out of there, sweetheart. Call the police and let them know this is one of his relatives. You don't even got to say you his sister. Say this one of his relatives. I was there, okay? He got the gun. That's all. Let them carry his ass the fuck up out of there and do some time. Maybe he'll think about the shit. Come on, Mother Nature. Can you think about letting me have a chance here? You know what I'm saying? Maybe he'd think about some shit. But that's how I would carry on. That's the fuck what I would do. I would call the proper authorities and let them know that there is an illegal gun in my mama's house and my brother done brought it up in there and I know that it was for a fact because he didn't pull the shit up out on me. Okay? Whatever. You're not only protecting yourself, but you're protecting your mother and your other little brother. And that's what I would do. I wouldn't even confront CJ no more, sweetheart, because for what? You're wasting your time. You're wasting your breath. And all he's going to do is be belligerent and irate and act like an asshole. So, you know what I'm saying? We don't waste our time on assholes, okay? We just have other people take care of them because that's their job, okay? And as far as where you need to stay, sweetheart, first of all, Please, Sydney, don't talk about hurting and harming your own self because that hurts me. And, like, I don't want anything drastic to happen to you. And, like, when I read that in the email, I really felt like having your email traced 
to, to, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I don't want anything bad to happen to you in general or to your family. Though I may not know you guys, that's harmful. And I would never wish harm on anybody. But I really would not want you to, excuse me, I really not want you to hurt yourself over somebody that's just so ignorant and immature. And if there is a waiting list, like a one to two month waiting list for the apartment complex, then sweetheart, get on the waiting list and move out. You know, I understand that you don't want to stay at the shelter. That's fine. Sometimes when you stay in shelters, they will help you find, you know what I'm saying, a proper place to live and good living arrangements, you know what I'm saying? So you may want to think about that. And you may want to put that into perspective and consideration that, you know, maybe I don't want to do this, but I might have to. Sometimes we have to do shit because we have to do shit. We have to put our pride aside and we have to think like, this might better my life. This may make things easier for me. So let me just take this step. Or what I would do is being at your friends, you know what I'm saying, they still stay with their parents. Maybe you should speak to your cousin and ask her, hey, is there a kid if I stay here for like a month with you guys, I'll help out. I'll give you money for, you know, for things and for food. And, you know, I'll help you out with the kid, your child. If, you know, if I could just stay here until the lease or the apartment opens up and just explain your situation. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you don't really know if that is okay for you to stay at your cousin's house, but I'm pretty sure if you explain your situation to her and let her know what's going on, she might have some good advice for you and she may also let you stay with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't nobody want to be somewhere where they don't feel safe and comfortable. You know what I mean? Like, I know I wouldn't. And it's just unfortunate that it be your own. Let me tell y'all something. It's just fucked up, but it always seemed like it'd be the, your own family that always drag you the fuck down. Like, seriously, it just, I don't know how many times I've had to say the same shit to the two adults that live here in my house. Like, I don't know how many times I've had to repeat myself. I, I just went off yesterday, last night, for real out there, because I had to tell my son, clean your room up, clean the room up. He didn't want to do it. I'm tired. I'm tired. I took my medication. I'm tired because he has anxiety. No, nigga, he was smoking weed. I know he was because I could tell you were high. You know what I'm saying? And he went and laid down. But you would sleep all night. You, you know, you had three, four days off and you still didn't clean that motherfucker up like I said. Because I got my little eviction paper packet on the coffee table and I've had my talk with them and let them know that this is going down. This is what's happening. Because I could either go and give them the fee money or y'all could hurry up and find y'all shit to get the fuck up out of my house or I could have y'all evicted. So, you know, they working on that, but meantime, you're not going to have all kind of food on the bed in, in your room. I don't give a fuck whose room it is. This is my house. So, you know, he kept saying he was tired. I already had to curse him out, tell him to take the shit out the room. And so he went and laid down, didn't even clean up the room properly. But, you know, he had to go to work at night. He goes at night. So I went and made sure he was up. And then I let him know, oh, and by the way, I hope you got money for a lift because I'm not taking you work. You know how you were so motherfucking tired and you was too tired to clean up that goddamn room, even though I asked you two days ago and then I told you again today when you was too tired to do that shit? Well, the same thing here. I'm too motherfucking tired to drive your ass to work. And first of all, it's not my job. Shit, I don't work there. What the fuck do I care? You ain't even gave me no gas money. Tell me I got to ask. I just ask me for the gas money. Why the fuck I got to ask you for gas money? My car don't run on love. You know what I'm saying? My car don't run on love. I know I care for you, but my car don't run on love. That shit run on gas, motherfucker. So sure enough, what? I said, huh. A bitch sat down on the motherfucking couch and did not go nowhere. And what happened? Took your little ass to work. Had an attitude. And like I said, I don't know why y'all stay having motherfucking attitudes. You got an attitude with me. I don't really give two shits if y'all have an attitude with me. Y'all stay having an attitude with me. But maybe if y'all do what the fuck y'all supposed to do, then you wouldn't have an attitude. But I could care less. I could give two fucks if you got an attitude with me or not. The door's right there. You can get the fuck out now. They take you there. Unfortunately, they take you there. And... I'm sorry, but I'm not having bugs in my house, like I told her, okay? And you could either clean the shit up. But here's the kicker, though. Wait. After I told him I wasn't taking him and I had said what I had to fucking say, did this nigga go in the kitchen and get one of the big, tall kitchen garbage bags and start throwing shit out of his room before it was time for him to go to work? Nah, nigga, nah. Like I said, oh, nah. You think because you cleaned it up now I'm supposed to take you? Ah, man, get the fuck out of here with that shit. I'm not. No, I'm not. And I sure didn't. See, it, it, you know what sucks, though? 
when they when, when you ask them or you tell them to do something for you and you have to tell them one, two, three, four, five times, and you still not so tight about it, but then the moment that you don't do something that they want, they catch an attitude like they're entitled to that shit. Man, please listen. I could care two fucks if you get to work or not because it's not my motherfucking job. I don't care. Get there how you get there. I didn't sign up for that shit. You grown. You want to be so grown? Then act grown because grown people are responsible and they clean up shit. That's what grown people fucking do. We don't live like slobs. So on that note, Sydney, I would definitely call the proper authority on my brother. For real. Realize that's your mama and your little brother in there that live there. You got to look out for them because ain't nobody else doing it. And for your for where you need to stay, just listen to what I'm saying. You can ask your cousin if you can stay there for maybe a month. You can ask your friend, talk to her parents, to their parents, hey, tell a situation. But either way, I would not stay in that household because it's very uncomfortable. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really think your brother's gonna kill you. But then again, who am I to say? You know what I'm saying? Even if he wasn't, even if for him to to call you all kind of bitches and try to come up in your face and put his hands on you, that's disrespectful. And nobody should have to live like that. I don't give a fuck who you are. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I would have called the police on him if that were me. And he pulled a gun out on me. Oh, yes, I'm calling the police on you. I don't get, brother, you're no brother of mine anymore because the brother don't do shit like that. Oh, no, we're not speaking to each other. No, no, no. He's cut off the list. He's kicked out the family. I will, I, look, I've quit just kicked somebody out the family. He's, he's done. He just pulled a gun out on me. You know what I'm saying? He just pulled a gun out on you. I wouldn't want to go back there, but I wouldn't want to let my mom and my my brother live there either in fear. And it's sad that her own mother peed on herself because she was so scared of the boy. Now, that right there goes to show you that he needs to leave the home. And the only way you're going to get him out, because your mother's not going to do anything about it, is to call the police. Straight up, bottom line. So, you guys, I'm going to go do this. Um video for this wig um i'm gonna go do it yeah the synthetic wig and yeah i will check back with you guys real soon i love you i hope you guys have an amazing day you know what i'm saying stay diva and diva delicious you know stuff like that honey i'm saying um yeah um what would you guys do in the situation let sydney know what you would do in the situation if it were you guys if it were you guys you know what would you do? How would you handle the situation? Because that nigga acting crazy. That ninja, let me tell you, that ninja would be sitting right there with the rest of the fucking criminals. You want to be so hard and gangster? Here you go. So, on that note, you guys, I love you. Stay deep and deep. Delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Um, check the info box because there might be something down there that you might want to click on. And, um, yeah. I'm going to go. I want to hold y'all too long. I love you. And I'll see you soon. Uh -huh.